Thank you so much, Ariel, and the whole Green Thumb team for all the work that you've done to make this possible, and also for um, allowing me the chance to facilitate this workshop and talk about herbs, one of my favorite things. So thank you, thank you. And uh, thank you everyone for being here today this morning. I'm really excited to be sharing about this topic because um, in my herbal studies, one of the things that I realized I really love is herbal oils. And I'm someone who tends to have dry skin and deals with acne issues. So it's really been like both um, a really powerful way for me to engage with herbs in a physical way, but also in a spiritual way, as we'll be um, learning more about like how we could work with herbs for spiritual purposes as well through the medium of oils. Um, so just a little bit about me. Um, as Ariel mentioned, I studied with Karen Rose uh, through her apprenticeship in Brooklyn. Um, I am from Brooklyn, uh, though I recently moved to Massachusetts to study Chinese medicine and continue um, my exploration of herbs in a different way. Um, so again, if anything, if you have any questions, feel free to type that in the chat. I'll be happy to um, discuss them when the time comes. So give me one second, let me pull up the presentation. Play the lavender here for you. <laughs> Everyone can see the screen okay? All right. Here we go. So I also wanted to say another reason why I wanted to cover this topic is because of the theme of the conference. Um, and I feel that a big part of being in community is first and foremost being in touch with yourself. And uh, we'll talk more about how skin relates to how we both uh, relate to ourselves and to others. So, and I think because of the pandemic, a lot of us have also been very touch starved in a way um, and having a lot less human contact due to social distancing. And for me, what has been really powerful was just to be in the garden and getting in touch with the actual herbs that I'm growing and being in relation to them. And also then like making medicine has been so helpful for me in getting through the pandemic. So this is what we'll be doing today. We'll be exploring the physical and spiritual aspects of the skin. We'll be learning about two herbs that are great for the skin. And then we'll do a demo on how to make an herbal infused oil. And then finally, we'll do a guided self massage. So here's some, here's a little bit about the skin. So the skin is the largest sensory organ and also the largest organ in the body. It surrounds our body. So it provides physical protection from external pathogens, physical abrasions and UV light. And it also helps with regulating body temperature. So if you think about how when we're hot, we sweat through the skin pores. And when we're cold, we have these goosebumps to try to retain as much warmth as we can. So our skin is really our body's barrier and protector in many ways. And it also is the boundary between ourselves and the rest of the world, um, both physically, but also on a spiritual level. So it's really about where do we start and then where do others begin? Like, how do we negotiate the boundaries between us and other? Um, and I think that is something that we're constantly um, finding balance in, in many ways. To what extent do we need to set boundaries for ourselves and our own needs? And to what extent do we need to maybe move past the boundaries to connect with the other or to meet others needs. So I think the skin is a great way to kind of contemplate that as well. Um, and also the skin is a reflection of our internal emotional states and our physiological imbalances. So the skin also serves as an eliminatory organ. So 
if your liver, for example, isn't functioning well, isn't um, filtering out the toxins in a in an easeful way, in an effective way, then that might show up in your skin as well. So the skin is really an external reflection of what may be going on inside because a lot of our body systems, they don't work um, in isolation. They are very much connected and working with one another. Um, and as I mentioned, the skin is our first line of physical defense. Um, and I also wanted to bring a little bit of Chinese medicine theory in here as well. Um, so in Chinese medicine, there are um, the understanding of organ systems is a little broader than what Western biomedicine covers. Um, so when we think about the lungs in Chinese medicine, the lungs is associated with the skin. So a lot of um, what we think about lungs, it also serves as sort of our first line of defense. If you think about, you know, when we first get sick, we're most prone to getting sick through the lungs because that is what, like that's, that's where we take in the air that we breathe in and that's also where we exhale. So it's really a direct connection to the outside world, quote unquote. Um, and similarly, the skin is um, the same in that sense of being the barrier between us and the outside world. Um, and the lung also governs Wei Qi. And Wei Qi is the energy that flows between the skin and the muscles at the surface of your body. Um, and you can also even think of it as like another form of our immune function, immune system of how it protects us from external pathogens. And also on a more emotional level, um, more spiritual level, it's about really like how we uh, protect ourselves energetically as well, like our aura. How do we maintain a sense of boundary and a sense of safety and protection as we go about our day, as we go about our lives? So uh, now that we talked a little bit about the skin, um, I also wanted to talk about two herbs that we'll be working with today um, to create an herbal infused oil. So many of you probably have um, used lavender, grown lavender um, in several ways. Um, and you probably have seen it in a lot of different types of skincare. Um, lavender is such a powerful herb in that it does so many things. Like it seems like such a delicate flower, but it's actually so strong. Like it, it's antimicrobial, antifungal, so it's great for athlete's foot, anti-inflammatory, analgesic, so it's helping with pain relief, and it's also skin regenerative. So it's a really great herb, um, both internally, but also externally, if you wanna put it on skin. It's also antiseptic, and it's been used in World War I to help dress and disinfect wounds. And I think what's really cool about lavender is that it's stimulating and relaxing at the same time. Um, so I think we often probably associate lavender with sleep and bedtime, which it totally is, and is a really great herb too, to work with dreams, but it also knows how to um, stimulate and reinvigorate. So um, I think for the skin, that's a really um, great thing because it also helps with um, anti-inflammatory response and also helps bring uh, more circulation to, to the skin. And I also really love lavender because it's so helpful for nervous tension and anxiety and irritability. Um, so whether you put it, to, put it in your bath or have a lavender eye pillow or even just smell it, um, it just brings this instantaneous um, relief. Uh, lavender is also great for headaches and muscle spasms and like I mentioned, so many different ways to use it. Foot wash, bath, as a hair rinse, as an oil, and you can also use the oil to make a salve. Um, and I also wanted to mention that um, you may have also 
uh, use lavender essential oil. So just to give that distinction between essential oil and the herbal infused oil that we'll be making today, um, essential oil is a very um, concentrated form of lavender in which it isolates just the essential oil components of the plant. So that requires distillation and it actually requires a lot of plant material in order to make a very small amount of essential oil. So you may infer from that that it's not necessarily the most environmentally friendly way of working with plants because you just need so much of it in order to make so little. Um, so what I also really love about making herbal infused oils is that it's um, very gentle on the skin and it's not super concentrated like essential oils, but also you're using the whole entire plant in making the oils and it's um, great for so many different purposes. Whereas for essential oil, you'll have to dilute it um, into a carrier oil to make sure that you're not overly, um, like at, you're not overly dosing and making it too um, strong for your skin. <laughs> so the next plant that I wanted to cover today is skullcap. Um, and I this plant right here, the photo on the left, I grew it in my garden. Um, and skullcap is also a really beautiful herb. Um, the aerial parts are used medicinally, meaning um, everything above ground you can add. And it's a really great nerve tonic, so it's great for the central nervous system. It's really great for people who can't shut their mind off um, if their thoughts are running, 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 or if they might be a student um, or teacher, someone who uses their brain a lot for work or study or whatever it may be. Skullcap is really great for just like cutting through all of that and calming the mind and helping you get to a more centered and still place where you can really hear yourself underneath all of the chatter of day-to-day -day -day life. And it's also a really great antispasmodic, so also really great for tight muscles. And I include this herb in my muscle and joint oil, and I gave it to my grandmother and she really loves it. She said it really helps her with her neck and shoulder pain. Um, so there also it's um, an analgesic, so it helps with pain as well. And it's also good for arthritis, which may be worsened by stress. So any kind of stress condition, any kind of like muscle tension and tightness, skullcap can be a really great plant to call upon and work with for these purposes. So before we learn about how to make herbal oils, I wanted to talk about why. Like why is this a form, a method of preparation for herbs? So a big piece of using herbal oils is that it is really great for absorption into the skin. Um, and just a little bit about, you know, the skin. Uh, the most superficial layer, so the most top layer of the skin is lipophilic, which means fat loving. So if you think about um, our skin, it is a form of protection for our body. It encases our body. So within the um, most superficial layer of the skin, the epidermis, there's a top layer within that called a stratum corneum. And that layer contains keratin, which waterproofs the skin and provides a lipid sealant around the, skin, around the cells. So that means, if you think about, like, what does it mean to be water loving? And you may have heard this, um, of the, of the phrase, like, water doesn't mix with oil. Um, if you think about, like, for example, making, um, eat, like, I guess salad dressing. Like, if you try to mix vinegar and oil, they don't quite mix. You, you just kind of emulsify it to try to combine it, but over time it separates. So when you think about using herbal oils, using oil and oil means they like each other, meaning it's better for um, absorption into the skin because of its chemical composition. So um, the oils will have an easier time passing through the skin. Um, and when you use the oil 
to extract the medicinal components of the plant. You're not only um, getting the benefits of the carrier oil that you're putting onto your skin, but also the herb that has been infused into the oil. So I just want to um, cover a few types of carrier oils. Um, and by carrier oils, I mean the oil that you're gonna use as the base to infuse the herbs into. And there are so many different types of oils you could use. What I'm, I'm putting on the slide here is just a few of them. Um, today I'll be sharing how to use jojoba oil. Um, I really love jojoba oil, um, even though it's technically a wax, um, fun fact, but what I love about it is that it's really close to our sebum, which is our skin's natural protective coating. So it, it, it meshes really well with our skin's natural protection already, so it doesn't feel like it's overly heavy or overly light, it's kind of just right. Um, but that being said, like you don't have to just use jojoba oil. I also really love olive oil as um, a carry oil for herbal infused oils because it's really great all-purpose um, oil. It is slightly on the heavier side, and depending on you know the, the, the type of olive oil, it may have its own olive oil scent. So you might want to consider consider whether that's important to you or not. Um, but I also love olive oil because if you are making an herbal oil that you might want to use as a uh, culinarily, so in cooking, um, olive oil you can consume. So that's another thing you want to think about. For example, if you make like garlic oil, uh, which you can use topically, um, that's great for ear infections. Or if you want to use garlic oil in cooking, in sauteing vegetables or your meals, that's another thing you could do. Um, another thing is grapeseed oil. I also have used this as well. I like that it's on the lighter side. Um, so it's um, not the best if you have really dry skin. In, the, in that case, you might want to mix grapeseed oil with another type of oil that might provide more of that um, moisturizing effect. Um, but I do really like how versatile that grapeseed is and it doesn't have much of an older odor so it really lets the herb itself shine. And I also wanted to highlight sesame oil which is used in Ayurveda for warmth and circulation and I, I found that it's really great for people who are more vata. So um, vata in Ayurveda is a uh, constitution that is associated with the element of air. So, you know, so for those, those vata types tend to have drier skin, tend to have, are more prone to anxiety and nervous tension. So sesame oil is a really great carrier oil to help um, balance that vata and introduce more calm and stability while also moisturizing the skin. So I love sesame oil for that and I also really love the scent of it. So just to give you an idea, there's a lot of different types of oils you might want to experiment with and maybe even um, make a blend of those two. The only thing I will say though is if you do use coconut oil as a carrier oil, which you totally can, um, just just keep in mind that coconut oil, it does become solid. Um, I'm not exactly sure the exact temperature, but when it, once it gets colder, it does become more solidified. So you, you want to um, take that into account as well. So I'm going to go through the slide and then I'll do a little demo. Um, so here is a recipe for a lavender skullcap herbal infused oil. So it's really important when you're making herbal oils to use dried herbs, and that is to ensure a longer shelf life for the oil because if you put water content into oil, it may uh, become rancid, um, if not now, then later. So for me personally, I like to use dried herbs. Um, and if it's something that you just harvested from your garden, you might want to let it, make sure it's dry before then adding it to your oil. Um, but obviously, if you've already harvested and processed it and it's dry, you can go ahead and do that. Um, 
That being said, there are a lot of different ways of making herbal infused oils, and this is just one of them. The method that I most often use is to make solar infused oils. So, um, and I'll get into you know what that entails. So first, you need a carry oil of your choice, the herbs, a clean glass jar, and it's important that it's clean and doesn't have any water content, and then a label and a marker. So part of my spiritual herbalism training is to really be intentional about getting to know each plant that I'm working with and also getting to know the spirit and the personality of the plant. And I think part of that is being in right relationship to the environment and to our plant beings as well, rather than just being extractive and reenacting the consumerist qualities that many of us have probably taken on. So I, I feel that herbalism, um, in terms of like how we engage with it, can be a powerful way to undo a lot of that conditioning and also open ourselves to the wisdom of the plants because they have so much to teach us, but it also requires us to be in a space of reflection and receptivity to be able to listen to the messages that come through from the plants. So the first thing that I always say is to set your intention for making this oil and giving thanks to the plants. And if there's some intention that you want to, you know, set into making this oil, it could be really anything. So I encourage you to think about like, what is really coming up for you at this time? Do you feel like you want to um, decrease your stress? Do you want to come back to yourself in a more centered place? Do you feel like you want to work with your boundaries and be able to resource yourself in order to resource others? I'm just throwing some ideas in there, but I really encourage you to use this opportunity when you're making this herbal medicine to think about what are your intentions because what you bring to the table is just as important to, to the process of making the herbal oil and its effectiveness. So here um, you add equal parts lavender and skullcap to the jar, filling up to a quarter of the way. So that is more like a folk method. Um, I personally uh, just visualize what a quarter of the jar would look like and if I want something to be a little stronger I'll add more so it's not set in stone that it has to be a quarter of the way that you fill a jar you really can uh, play with it and add more if you want to make it more concentrated and then next you pour the oil into the jar until it reaches close to the top and then you cap and shake the jar and during this time the herbs may absorb some of the oil so you may need to add a little more oil to top it off. I usually keep maybe a couple, like two to three centimeters um, on the top of the jar as air. So I fill it close to the top, but not all the way to the top where it would spill over if I opened it up again. Next, you'll label the jar noting the ingredients and the date. Um, so that's really important because you wanna know when you created it and then from there, when it will be ready to use. And if there's anything else you want to do, like if you want to name what that oil is, if you want to maybe if you're astrologically inclined, the moon phase or any transits, um, you can also do that too. And then you want to place the jar in a warm, sunny place in your space and shake it regularly. So I know it's probably not, and also for myself too, that realistic to be shaking it every single day, but if you could do it three to four times a week whenever you remember it, or even leave it in a sacred space in your house, if you have an altar, if you have a windowsill where you keep um, maybe photos or crystals, like anywhere where you could um, be reminded that it's there, I think it's helpful to, um, as a reminder for yourself to go over there and give it a shake and also like continue to infuse it with your intention. So the reason why um, I say a warm sunny place is because uh, what the effect is that the sun and the warmth is gently warming up the oil um, so that it, the herb infuses into the oil. 
And I do know that, you know, around wintertime, it's a little harder to do so in finding a warm space. So actually um, in the summertime, it's a really ideal time to make oils, which isn't to say you can't make it any time of the year, but the summertime is also a really great time to do that and prepare them. And after six weeks, it's ready to be strained out for use. So at that point, you could um, strain it out and keep it into uh, keep it in an amber or darker glass container for longer shelf life. So you know, once the herbs have already been infused into the oil, you don't want to you don't want to continue to having that sun exposure because that can also help um, denature the oil and make it go uh, make it spoil more quickly. That being said, I have noticed that most of my oils have a pretty long shelf life. Um, I often infuse it for more than six weeks. I have oils going five, eight months, even a year. Um, if I don't necessarily need them right away, I'll just keep them infusing. So I would just say, you know, use your sense of smell. So if it smells off or if you see any mold, then obviously don't use it. But if you follow all these instructions and try to keep it as sanitized and clean as possible, most likely your oil will last a pretty long time. So with that, I'm going to stop share and do a little herbal demo on how to make this oil. So here I have a glass jar and oh, this is what the final product might look like. So this is, um, I made a lavender infused oil with olive oil and I also put the date and the time. Um, so, you know, it's pretty simple and straightforward and you want to just shake it um, regularly. So first I will put some lavender flowers in and I'll hold it up once I'm done. Next, I have some skull cap that I grew. It's a little hard to see beyond the. Yeah, maybe oh. Vivian, uh, if you want to get rid of the background, it might be easier to see. Here we go. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> skull cap. I think something that skull cap has taught me is patience because I tried growing this from seed and nothing came of it. Um, I think I sowed it in April um, and it still nothing came out and then I thought it was done and then later on in like late May I started seeing the sprouts and I was like wow what is that oh it's skullcap um, and side note um, skullcap is ruled by Saturn so if you think about planetary planetary correspondence and what it means in astrology Saturn rules time and so it was for me a lesson in patience and waiting <laughs> for the skull cap to come. So I think part of um, maybe the oil too, if like you, you are impatient, you might wanna call on skull cap to teach you. So I'm gonna add some of the skull cap here as well and break it up a little bit. And for these herbal oils, I do recommend breaking up the plant into smaller pieces so that you can increase the surface area that the oil is in contact with. Here I have, I'm just gonna mix it a little bit. Mm, so good. I wish you could smell this. <laughs> so here's my lavender skull cap blend. So once I have that ready, I will bring over my jojoba oil. 
And then the next thing I will do is top it off. So if you see here, it's close to the top, but not completely. Um, I think with these kinds of jars, it's really easy for the oil to spill over, even though it's closed. So I like to keep just a little bit of um, space at the very top. And then what I'll do is I'll shake this, make sure it's evenly incorporated. Sometimes the herbs like to clump together um, in the jar, so you just want to make sure to shake thoroughly to make sure everything is loose and floating in the oil. And then you might want to reopen this and just see if it might need a little bit more oil. I think I'm fine here. And then I'll cap it again. And when making herbal remedies, labels are your friends. So I have this sticker sheet and then I have a um, marker. And another thing to think about too is over time the um, pen or marker might fade from the sticker labels. So you just want to make sure that you know what you put in there. Vivian, are you able to tilt your camera down to so everyone can see what you're doing? I... Maybe a little? here here we go thank you so i'm writing the ingredients lavender and skullcap in jojoba oil and today is february 25th 2022 and i'll put the time 12. you don't have to put the time but i like to And then you'll just remove this and add it to your jar. And there you have it. So this is your herbal jar and place it in a warm sunny space with so that it can infuse over time. And once it's done, you can strain out the rest and ideally compost the herbs. And you can then strain it into a dropper bottle like this. Um, so I, I know I said an amber oil, um, amber colored glass bottle to help uh, protect it from UV light, but I am an aesthetic, so I like the glass dropper bottles and I go them I go through them pretty quickly as well so I sometimes like adding my oils to these dropper bottles and then what I really um, like about it too is I can sort of like temper how much I want to use so if I'm using it for my body I might do a couple of pumps or for my face just like half or full so you could kind of play around with how much you want to use, but I do like these bottles as a way to dispense of the herbs. Let's see. So now um, we're going into the self massage demo. Um, so I just wanted to share. Um, a massage that I enjoy for myself and you can either pair it with an herbal oil when you're doing the massage or you could do it without it's really up to you um, I just find massage and self-touch to be a great way to connect to myself and also just to like check in with my own body to see how it's been doing um, I'm sure many of you can relate it's there's just so much to do and so many responsibilities that we might have in many ways. So I think even if you just have five or 10 minutes to yourself to come back to your body and also just to see like what is going on for you, I think that is a really great way for us to resource ourselves so that we can go back to whatever it is we're doing. We can go back to caring for our community. So. I also wanted to share self-massage too because in a time where 
the pandemic is still going on, you know, there's still an element of like, do we hug each other? Do we not? And with social distancing, I found self massage to be a really great way to still get in touch with my body, um, even if it might mean I still have to be socially distanced. So this um, massage is inspired by Thai massage. Um, so I have elements of that um, and also from yoga. Um, and so here we go. So you're welcome to follow along if you want as I'm doing this. And you're also welcome to look back to this recording. And if you do have your herbal oil or even just a, a regular carrier oil that you want to follow along and use with, you're welcome to do so. Um, so I'm just going to do it uh, with a little bit of calendula oil for myself. So just add a little bit to my hands. So I invite you now uh, to be in a comfortable seated position and to take a deep breath in and now. calling yourself back into the present moment and just putting aside whatever may be a distraction for you, whatever you have to be doing or get done today and just invite yourself to come back into this space so that you can be in touch with your own body. And at this point, you can add a little bit of oil to your hands or you can also, if you don't want to use oil, just rub your hands together to warm it up. Okay, so here we go. So first, I will just massage with my fingers along my eyebrows from the center out. You may also want to follow along with your breath and your movement. So inhale and exhale as you brush it to the sides. And then you can also use both thumbs to uh, sweep upwards from the bridge of your nose up between your eyebrows. And this is also really great for clearing any sinus congestion. And also, either with intention or with working with the lavender skullcap oil to open your third eye, being able to see through the truth with your intuition, connecting to your inner wisdom. And then next, take your hands and the four, the middle index ring and pinky finger and placing them right above your eyebrows and just doing gentle circular rotations from the center outwards. And you can play around with what amount of pressure you want. So it's this motion and then you're doing the same thing but slightly upwards until you reach the top. So here. And then I'm going to go up a little more and I'm doing the same exact thing. Yeah, up again. Okay. 
and until I reach the top of the forehead. And you can do this for however long you want when you're doing this on your own. And then next, I'm just going to rub my temples in a circular fashion as well. And just feel if you notice any points of tenderness or tightness on your skull and just giving that gentle circular pressure to that area. So you may want to just feel around the sides of your head for that. Remembering to deep, take a deep breath in and out. And then next, you're going to take all of your fingers this time and shampoo your hair. So basically what you would do if you were to shampoo yourself, except you're just doing it right now. And going through your entire head, massaging in a circular motion all over. So including the sides of the head, the top of the head, working your way to the back. And if you make an herbal oil that has herbs such as rosemary or lavender, for example, and massage it into the roots of your hair, it's also really great for promoting hair growth and also helping with dandruff as well. Rosemary is great for that. You're bringing blood circulation to your head, relieving any tension, letting go of any stress. And once that feels complete, if you have hair, long hair, you can put it behind your ear. So you want to clear the space for our ears since we're working on that next. So now take this pinching motion between your thumb and the side of your index finger and gently just massage it between those two fingers, the entirety of your ear. I think the ear is often a place of our body that we ignore, don't really think about. And I find it kind of funny that our ear is also the most used part nowadays. I have glasses, so I have that. And then my face mask when I'm out. And then my earphones. So there's a lot going on in the ears. So I like to remember just to give it some loving.
And then once you're done with that, make a peace sign with both of your hands. And then what you're going to do is go from bottom up. So to give you a demo, it's right here. And I'm just rubbing the sides of my ear on the front and back, massaging with my fingers on both sides. And you can also pause at points where you feel tenderness, give it some more time and attention. You're welcome to be guided intuitively as well when it comes to using the massage and how you want to place your fingers. This is just a guide. And then next, I'm going to take my thumbs and place it in the back of my head where the occiput is. And that is where, towards the back of your head, where this little bump that you may feel here. What you'll do is just slide your thumb under that protuberance and just give that part a massage with your thumb. So you might find it to be a little tender in that area. You might also play around with how much pressure you want to put in there just to give that a massage I don't love that spot And then finally, take your two hands and now cross your arms so that your hands rest at the base of your neck on each side. And just give it some squeezes. Massage your neck and shoulders at this point. Take a deep breath in and out. And now take both hands, place it at the back of your neck on each side, and then just do gentle rotation of your shoulders while placing some gentle pressure on your fingers at the back of your neck. And then finally, we're going to do some neck stretches. So take one hand and just you're not putting pressure, you're just letting your arm fall down naturally with the gravity to put your neck to one side. And so you should feel a gentle stretch down here. And as you take a breath, imagine it flowing down the side of your neck. And then next you'll do the other side. Again, you're not putting any pressure, you're just letting the arm fall with gravity. Gently opening now this side of your neck. And now clasp both of your hands together and place it at the back of your head and then gently allow your arm and gravity to pull your neck down in flexion.
Hey, Vivian? Yep. I'll be right there, right done. Okay, Almost. great. And then, lastly, extend your neck. And you might want to give it a couple of rotations on each side. And then we're done. Thank you all so much. Awesome. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Vivian. Um, we have a few questions from folks in the chat. Um, and we really appreciate your presentation and you sharing these really um, yeah, healing exercises for us, Vivian. Um, a couple of folks asked questions about where they can buy um, some of the dried herbs that you mentioned, including lavender and skull cap. There are a lot of great local places where you could buy dried herbs. So depending on where you are, I encourage you to go to your local apothecary to get them. Um, if you're in Brooklyn, I recommend going to Sacred Vibes Apothecary. That's one place that I love. Um, and also there are other um, farms, local farms as well. So um, Foster Farm Botanicals is, is in Vermont. Um, so I just encourage you to look at what is out there in your area and support local farms and businesses and herbalists. And also, of course, if you are in a community garden, you can um, res like find your resources that way and dry the herbs after you've grown them. Great, thank you. Um, that actually leads into a next question about how to dry the herbs. Do you have any recommendations on drying fresh herbs? Yes, yeah, so I, uh, well, once you've harvested them, um, I like to rinse them about at least two times just to get any debris out and any bugs that may have gotten there. I know some herbalists d forego that process, but I personally do want to rinse them. So after I rinse them, I'll bunch them together and then hang them from upside down from the stem being the top and then um, the leaves and the aerial parts facing downwards. And that would help with um, getting the moisture out more quickly. And um, if I have a bunch of them, I'll just tie it with like just regular rope or twine and then use some sort of hanger so that it's up in the air. Um, so that is usually how I do it, a pretty simple method. Um, there are other ways, but that, that I usually do. Great, thank you. Um, a couple of folks also asked questions about uh, what happens if you don't have a warm and sunny spot in your apartment, um, you know, how to go about um, infusing the oils. Yeah, I mean, I think just find the warmest spot that you can is the way to go. Um, you may also want to look into making um, herbal oils on the stove top, like a double boiler type of method where you're slowly warming it. Um, the downside is that you kind of have to keep an eye on it for several hours on the stove. Um, it is a more uh, quicker way of making the oils. I personally like to do the whole six weeks plus. So I think, you know, even if time is not of essence, just let it infuse for longer than six weeks, especially if you're not in a super warm place. I think that's totally fine. Um, but there are definitely other methods of making herbal infused oils that provide a low level of heat over a um, period of a few hours or more. That's really helpful. Thank you. Um, I think you also mentioned in terms of the coconut oil that it can um, harden as it gets cooler. Uh, do you have any recommendations like can you soften it uh after it becomes solid even yeah yeah you totally can and i don't remember the exact name of that type of coconut oil but there is a type where it's processed so that it just stays liquid the whole time whereas there's also coconut oil that does become more solidified as the temperature gets cooler so in that case i would just maybe put the entire jar in a warm uh, water bath so i'm not getting the water in contact with the herb, it's it, with the oil itself in the jar, but I'm warming it up so that the insides will melt so that I can pour it out with more ease and strain out the herbs. Um, it just gets a little more complicated if you're thinking of using that coconut oil 
in a salve, so that's like a balm, um, just because you might want to play with the proportions and how solid you want that salve to be. So, it, I mean, that is going a little more in the weeds, but another thing to consider if you're looking to uh, use the oil for other purposes. Great, thank you. Um, and are there any type of uh, suggestions that you might have in terms of the metal uh, jar top? Does it matter um, what type of jar you use for top? No, I like to use mason jars. I think those are pretty handy. Uh, but as long as you have any kind of clean glass jar, you're able to use it. I don't really use um, plastic lids so much, but I don't see why not. The only thing is maybe it might leak out a little more easily, depending on how um, how well the seal is in the jar. Great. And I know you mentioned that um, you can compost the dried herbs after straining. Um, does it matter what size like compost system you use for that? Would you recommend a larger scale compost system or the like, backyard compost system? Okay. I think backyard compost system is okay. I kind of see on the same level as like composting food scraps. Great. Awesome. Well, yeah, thank you everyone for all your great questions. And you can also continue the conversation on Slack. Um, so there's a link to that in the chat box. Um, thank you so much, Vivian. We really appreciate your time with us today and for sharing all of your knowledge. And um, yeah, really appreciate it. Thank you. And I forgot to share the last two slides of my slideshow, but there is a link that will be shared. I just added some additional resources for people who want to read up on how to make these herbal infused oils and just to learn more about the skin. Um, so check out those books too if you want to go deeper.